All right, 22.1, we're going to do this a little backwards with a little video lesson since I'm going to be gone today uh, and just kind of go through and explain 22.1 and what we're talking about when we talk about organic chemistry. So as we widen on the year here, we're going to kind of finish talking about organic chemistry and a couple of other loose odds and ends uh, in chemistry. But when we talk about organic chemistry, it's one of the main branches of chemistry and in fact, it's probably one of the largest studied branches of chemistry. And when you study uh, organic chemistry, you are studying carbon-containing compounds. So essentially what you're doing is you're studying the chemistry of life. All right, carbon is the element of life. Everything that's living has carbon, and it's linked to many different elements. Remember, carbon is capable of four bonds, which is the maximum number of bonds as well. So if we were to take a periodic table for an organic chemist, it would look something like this. You're really studying three elements, believe it or not, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Now, you are going to study a handful more than just those three, but those are the main three, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So things are really simplified. And when we talk about organic chemistry, <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to talk about hydrocarbons. And that's what our attention is going to be on, is hydrocarbons. And what two elements do you think exist in a hydrocarbon? Well, that makes sense, carbon and hydrogen. So those are the two elements we're going to focus on and how to name those two. You can substitute another element for hydrogen, and therefore that would be number two, a substituted hydrocarbon. When you do that, you're going to change the properties of the molecule. We're going to talk about that a little later uh, in Chapter 22. So we, in Chapter 22.1, are going to focus strictly on hydrocarbons. And when we focus on hydrocarbons, we're going to work on two things, the molecular formula and the structural formula. Now, the molecular formula simply shows how many atoms are in each compound. So, for example, the molecular formula for water is H2O. The structural formula, however, is essentially going to be the Lewis dot structure for that. And it's going to show you how it's bonded together. So, the structural formula for water would look something like this. As you can see, the structural formula, there are multiple structural formulas that can exist for molecules. For example, sugar, C6H12O6. If you go and do the structural formula, it's going to look something like this, and then i got to add H's, and you kind of get the gist of it. It's a structural formula that kind of shows the identity of the structure. So... We're going to focus on molecular formulas and structural formulas and then how to name these. But before we get there, we're going to talk about what's the main difference between organic and inorganic compounds. Now remember, organic is living or at one time was living. Inorganic is not living like metals. So number one, most organic compounds do not dissolve in water. Well, think of an organic compound in your body. Fat. Does fat dissolve in water? No. All right, oil. Oil at one time, remember, oil at one time was living. Does oil dissolve in water? No. All right, so there's kind of step number, number one difference between organic and inorganic molecules. Number two, organic compounds are decomposed by heat more easily than inorganic. Oil or metal, which one's going to combust or decompose easier with heat, right? Oil, because, all right, that's inorganic. Inorganic would be metal. It takes a lot of heat to decompose metal. So that's number two. Three, organic reactions usually proceed at slower rates. All right, think of all the labs that we've done so far this year. They're all inorganic, and they all go very quickly, whereas... Uh, organic reactions would be like your body, your body's rate to break down food. That's a slow process. All right. Number four, organic reactions are sensitive to outside conditions. What's your body temperature right now? 98.6. That's very specific. If you have a fever of 102, 
or your body temperature drops to 92, you're going to have issues with your body performing its normal functions. So it's very sensitive to outside conditions. Five, organic compounds are formed by covalent bonds, where uh, uh, organic compounds are formed by covalent bonds, where uh, inorganic are usually bionic. And then lastly, organic compounds have many isomers. And what is an isomer? An isomer is a structural rearrangement of an uh, organic molecule. So for example, I had sugar earlier, C6, H12, O6. There are probably multiple ways I could write that Lewis dot structure, and that is an isomer. So uh, an isomer is just multiple ways to do that structure. Then, where are we going to focus our attention on organic molecules? Well, there are four types of organic molecules. Alkanes, which are all single bonds. Alkenes, which have a double bond. Alkynes, which have a triple bond. And aromatic compounds, which form rings. And we're really going to focus on the first three. Alkanes, single bonds. Alkenes, double bonds. And alkynes, triple bonds. And today, we're going to focus on naming alkanes. All right. So alkanes. Where are alkanes used in society? Well, anything that ends in an ane that is a fuel is most likely a alkane. So for example, uh, propane. All right. Else do you, uh, what type of gasoline do most of you put in your cars, I'm guessing? Right. Octane. All right. uh, if you have a, a lighter or anything else that uh, to start a campfire, those are usually butane lighters. All right. So anything that ends in ane is going to be a alkane. They are saturated, which means they have the maximum number Maximum number of hydrogens. We've talked about this when we talked about uh, foods, all right? Saturated fats versus unsaturated fats. They have the maximum number of hydrogens. Alkanes are the same way. Then, what is the difference between this and this? Well, in the top example, how many carbons do we have? One, two, three. They're all linked with single bonds, so it's going to end in ane. And on the bottom, we have one, two, three, four. They are all four bonds. Again, all single bonds. Anytime you have all single bonds and it's all carbons, it's automatically going to end in ane. What you are going to have to know is you're going to have to know the prefixes. So the prefix for one, meth, two, eth, three, prop. 4 but, 5 pent, 6 hex, 7 hept, 8 oct, 9 non, and 10 dec. So hypothetically here, we have 1, 2, 3, 3 carbons. What's our prefix for 3? Probe. It's all single bonds, so it's going to end in ane. So this is an example of propane. All right. One below. How many carbons do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. What's the prefix for four? The prefix for four is but. We have all single bonds, so we're going to end in ane, butane. All right. Now, I want to go through and do a couple of examples here with side chains. All right. Now, what's going to happen is sometimes you're not going to have one continuous line. You're not going to have one continuous line, and that is called a side chain. So in the green here, you see you had a choice. You could have went one, one, two, three, four, five, six, or we could have went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to go with the longest chain. So our longest chain was, I'll highlight it in pink, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that ended up being our side chain. How do we name side chains? Well, that's kind of what we're going to do. Anytime you name a side chain, it's going to end in ul, ethyl, like a y l, ul. It's going to end in ul. So that's an example of a side chain. So if we look here, let's look at this example. 
Where's our side chain? Well, our longest possible carbon could be one, two, three, four, five. Or it could be one, two, three, four, five. Or it could be one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter. Our longest chain was five, so it doesn't matter how you do it when your longest chain is the same. So let's talk about now if we have side chains, how are we going to how are we going to name these molecules? Well, here is the step by step directions to do this. Number one, you're going to determine if it's an alkene, al alkane, alkene, or alkyne. That's very easy for today because we are just going to do alkanes. All right. Step number two. Once you've figured out today that it's an alkane, all of them will be alkanes today. You're going to find the longest possible parent chain. And the parent chain is the longest continuous streak of carbons that you could have. Right. Number three, after you found the parent chain, you're going to assign numbers to each parent chain. And when you do that, you're going to start closest to the side chain. So you're going to start numbering closest to the side chain. You're going to attack, attach your prefix, number four, such as meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, hex, etc. Step number five, you're going to determine the name of the branched compounds. And then number six, if you have multiple side chains, you're going to put them in alphabetically. So... I want to go through and I want to go through an example here, two examples on the board. We have one here and one here. Let's go through and follow the example. First, we know that in the top example, it's going to end in ane. Why is it going to end in ane? That's because we have all single bonds. We have all single bonds. Next, we have to find the longest possible chain. So let's see, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We could go that route. 9. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That works too. All right. Next up, let's see if we can go one, two, three, four. Ah, that's a bad one. Nope. Dead end. That's no good. Let's see if we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's no good there. So it looks like our longest possible chain is going to be nine. So I'm going to highlight our longest possible chain of nine. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, what is the prefix for nine? The prefix for nine is non. So we are go. We know this is nonane. However, what we have to do is we have to now number closest to the side chain. So if we number closest to the side chain, uh, we're going to start here. So we can start one of two ways. We can number one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm going to start in the blue. And why am I going to start in the blue? The reason I'm going to start with the blue numbers is that we go, our first side chain is one, two, three. Our first side chain is right here off of the third carbon. If we do it in red, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our first chain isn't until 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the blue numbers. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start numbering. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3. Off of the third carbon, I'm going to go 3 hyphen. Anytime we have a side chain, it ends in O. So what's the prefix for 2? Eth. So we're going to go 3-ethyl, comma. We're going to go to our next carbon, 4. 
I have one here, and I have one here. They're going to be two different side chains. What's the abbreviation for one carbon? Meth. All right, what's the abbreviation for two? Eth. So here, we're going to go for hyphen. We have a ethyl, and we have a methyl. Now, if you have two on the same, you have to alphabetize. So we're going to go ethyl, methyl. And lastly, going over to that fifth carbon, again, we have two more. What is our prefix for two? Our prefix for two is eth. So we're going to go ethyl. So the name of this compound would be 3-ethyl, 4-ethylmethyl, 5-ethyl nonane. All right, let's do one more example. All right, this example, let's find the longest possible chain in this example. So let's go ahead and see what we can find. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8. All right, can we find longer than 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 8. But here's where the difficulty comes. When you're finding your longest possible parent chain, you can't have a branch off of a branch. And what do I mean a branch off of a branch? Well, this would be our side branch. But you see how we have a branch off of a side branch? We can't have that happen. So your longest possible chains can only have one branch going off of it. So for this example, our longest possible chain is going to be right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right. Next, remember, all right, we have all single bonds. All single bonds, and we have 8. What's the prefix for 8? Oct, and we have all single bonds, so it's going to be octane. All right. Next up, we have to start numbering our, si our carbons. And we're going to start numbering closest to the side chain. So should we start on the left or start on the right? We start on the right, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, our first side group is 3. If we did from the left, it would have been 1, 2, 3, 4. Our first side chain would have been until the fourth carbon. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 off of our third carbon. All right, how many carbons do we have? We have 2. The prefix for 2 is eth, so we're going to go 3-ethyl. Then our next carbon here, our next carbon is carbon 4. How many, what's the prefix for three? It's prop, so we're going to go for propyl. Remember that all our side chains end in YL. And lastly, off of the fifth carbon, there are three carbons. So again, we're going to go propyl. So the name of this compound here would be 3-ethyl, 4-propyl, 5-propyl, octane. And that's going to be your final answer. We will practice some more in class tomorrow, and if you have questions on class or how to expand on this, we will get those questions answered tomorrow. Other than that, I hope you can get a good start on the worksheet, and I will see you tomorrow.